Good afternoon, I'm Valentina Cogliati, President and CEO of ELE Master Group, and I'm proud to welcome you to this first webinar. During today's event, we will analyze together the latest market trends of the PCB market and discover the wide range of services provided by ELE Print, the company of ELE Master Group specialized in PCB design and manufacturing. Mrs. Veronica Bonfanti, Ele Print Chief Communication Officer and Board Member, Mr. Paolo Potenza, Ele Print Chief Technology Officer, and Mr. Marco Monreale, Senior Sales Director, will guide us. Then, we will discover together the fascinating world of printed electronics, together with our partner, Mr. Giorgio Dell'Erba, CEO of FlipTech. The whole event will be led by our moderator, Mrs. Anna Gibillaro. So thank you for your participation. And I would like to remember you also the next two events on June 29 and September 16, that will be focused on test engineering and mechatronics. So let's leave the word to Mrs. Veronica Bonfanti and start our interesting meeting. Thank you. Welcome everyone to current and uh, I hope uh, future customers here to be the first uh, webinar. I will give you a quick overview of uh, our company, Eleprint, which is dedicated to the production of uh, printed circuit boards. We was born around 30 years ago here uh, in Lombardy, uh, near to Milan. And uh, along the years, uh, we, bo we grow both in terms of uh, capabilities and uh, square meters. In 2000, we built a new company in uh, Tito Scalo, next uh, to Naples, and uh, we are uh, continuously growing uh, our uh, buildings and, uh, as said, capabilities and uh, so on. We cover uh, different uh, kind of uh, services and uh, in particular we uh, cover the whole uh, life of printed circuit uh, boards, starting from the idea to the complete uh, product. In fact, our team of engineers will help you to develop your Gerber files and your master and then uh, we can uh, guide you uh, through pre-series uh, production, MPI and uh, mass production. We cover several uh, sectors. Main ones are uh, railways and transport and medical and uh, earth care. But uh, we also uh, work in uh, some interesting niches, such as uh, um, avionics and defense, uh, automation and energy, uh, automotive, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, we both perform uh, in-house uh, production and uh, trading. And uh, we have uh, an internal laboratory to perform uh, several kind uh, of uh, analysis, such as uh, TMA, electric and electronic test, metallographic section, that we use both to check our internal processes and uh, production and to inspect the goods that we buy from other suppliers. For us, uh, considering that our main uh, quarter is uh, located in a natural park, is important also the environmental uh, concern. And in fact, we partially use to make our production, our solar energy photovoltaic panels, and we have a refurbishment, a waste treatment, and uh, a well for the uh, water use. Uh, today, I just uh, give you a quick uh, overview of the company, but uh, if you are interested and uh, if you need uh, more uh, information, uh, you are, of course, uh, welcome uh, to ask. And uh, now I think that uh, it's time uh, to go uh, into the real uh, webinar and uh, start uh, the speech of uh, our guests. So I leave the word to Miss uh, Gibillaro, our moderator. Thank you all. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you very much. And welcome. Welcome you all. I'm very happy to be here today with you 
and I will be with you during the whole event. I would like to explain how this is going to be structured. There is going to be two parts. The first part, in the first part, we will have three speakers, very interesting contributions. And after each speech, there will be a survey and we would really like you to answer to the survey because uh, the company is really interested in your opinion. And then there will be a Q&A session uh, for the speaker. So this is going to be a very interactive and dynamic session. And then in the second part, we will have a round table uh, when we will comment and review the answers to your surveys. Okay, so now we can actually start with the speakers. And the first one will be Paolo Potenza, CTO of Eleprint. Good afternoon and welcome everybody is listening this event. Uh, <clears throat> this is the technical presentation of Eloprint. Uh, we wish to make a small view panoramic on the newest uh, technology that are looking uh, to the future in this moment, uh, starting from the state of the heart of uh, modern PCB. The first uh, three topics are well-known technologies, but uh, that has uh, a had a lot of uh, growth in the last uh, period uh, due to complexity, to miniaturization uh, of the new generation of uh, printed circuit boards. So we can start with, uh, with the first slide. Uh, starting from HDI PCB, high density interconnection PCB, printed circuit board. This kind of uh, boards are uh, uh, boards uh, uh, with higher, high, higher wiring um, density per unit area respect to the past. The, you know exactly that uh, uh, to be considered as an HDI PCB, you need to have uh, one of all of the sec of the following uh, of the following uh, uh, things inside of the PCB, uh, blind and barred uh, vias, uh, micro vias, uh, uh, sequential build-up build lamination, and uh, uh, or sub, sub assemblies lamination, uh, and uh, especially high signal performance inside of the PCB. Uh, you can see from the imagine uh, that the density is uh, is higher than a normal PCB. The sequential lamination hello to the designer to uh, to have uh, a lot of connection uh, in the in uh, in a small part of the PCB. This is uh, due to uh, kind of many kind of uh, possibilities. Uh, through all via, you know perfectly, uh, there, there are also staked uh, micro vias, staggered micro vias, uh, and barred or, bl or blind micro vias, also on uh, one on each other, uh, like staggered one. Also, you could have skip vias to get uh, more than one layer to uh, or CNC or laser drilling. Uh, in, addiction, in addition of this kind of um, this kind of uh, possibilities, you find uh, a lot of PCB now with the back drill uh, philosophy that allow you with the uh, uh, Z-axis controlled CNC equipment to get a connection between a, a layer many many layer of the of the PCB. Uh, the second topics uh, that we want to uh, investigate uh, is uh, another well-known topics uh, subject with uh, flex and rigid flex PCB. This kind of PCB uh, in the last year uh, push a lot of uh, in terms of innovation uh, and uh, are used in a lot of um, 
a lot of uh, normal uh, application like ma medical and biomedical devices, aerospace uh, and automotive uh, devices, uh, a lot of consumer electronics devices, and also for te telecommunication uh, uh, devices. It's important uh, to say that this kind of technology has a lot of advantages. Uh, the first one is uh, to, uh, to uh, the ability to reduce uh, the space of the PCB. And also, uh, with the flex part of the PCB, you uh, can uh, eliminate or uh, get less problem in terms of uh, as assembling and in terms of changes of, uh, of a section of a conductor, because you don't need uh, any more, you don't need any more uh, additional components, um, uh, such as cables or connectors. This also leads to, a, uh, to reduce uh, substantially the weight and the size of the devices. Uh, in this uh, in this recent period, you can uh, see also from picture and from the slide that uh, uh, is uh, uh, with new materials uh, and with uh, micro technologies, uh, we are able now to uh, have a, a lot of miniaturization on also on wearable also on wearable electronic uh, as bracelets. Uh, uh, smart watches uh, or um, the light, the latest generation of a smartphone, and also micro micro camera, micro video camera, uh, like consumer uh, electronics. Uh, in the last uh, example that you can see on the on uh, on your monitor. You could uh, you could investigate some cyber technology in line with the fashion of uh, of intercommunication between human body and uh, electronic function, as Neuralink uh, try to do with uh, some components uh, or some chips uh, directly uh, installed inside the human body. Let's uh, get to the third. Uh, topics in the last uh, year, uh, especially with a high integration of uh, components on uh, on the bare boards, thermal management uh, of assembled PCBs uh, is becoming uh, uh, a, a real a real issues for engineer and designer. Uh, the heat transfer between the heat generating uh, system and the cooling uh, the cooling uh, system used to to move away the heating from certain part of the pcb has become uh, a real uh, a real uh, a real tool for all the uh, designers because uh, you know you know that uh, the working uh, at high temperature uh, outside of the suggested range for com uh, for components especially could uh, could um, uh, could give you thermal throttling uh, could give you uh, signal interference uh, and overheating of the components uh, on the on the bare boards uh, and sometimes also the failure of the of the of the components uh, in cases not uh, cooled uh, properly there are many materials uh, now used uh, for this kind of application. The, the, the most used are copper, aluminum, and uh, sometimes brass. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, slide, you can see the an example of the heating source uh, inside of the PCB or, or outside of the PCB on the on the surface, and you can. Uh, get with different shape of copper coin or metal coin you can get different uh, thermal conductance so the designer could uh, choose different shape of this kind of uh, metal coin to uh, match with the ideal 
uh, overheating uh, uh, with the ideal uh, cooling of the part where it is necessary to operate. In fact, uh, you can see also in this, uh, in this slide, you could see on the right part of the slide a standard uh, construction uh, of a uh, back metal where the back part of the PCB is totally uh, covered with a, with a kind of uh, metal that is uh, with, a, with a certain uh, thermal conductance. And uh, uh, on the left side of the slide, you can see different shape of the copper coin, the press fit coin, bonded coin, coin with cavity, and uh, embedded coin. All of these as different uh, thermal conductance that uh, have to be matched by the designer when they need uh, this kind of uh, tools uh, inside of the PCB. Let's go on another topic. This topic is uh, more recent with respect to the other and uh, uh, these embedded systems now are part of um, a lot of application where encapsulated devices uh, allow you to uh, realize different kind of uh, different kind of uh, complex PCB normally now use it in DVD, MP3 or players uh, or uh, fridges and microwaves uh, systems, uh, automotive uh, and uh, aerospatial application. But in the future, probably we will uh, find this kind of technology uh, more frequently also in uh, consumer in, or in normal PCB. Um, there is possibility, as you can, as is shown in the picture, there is possibility now to to insert inside of the PCB active or passive devices, as you can see. Uh, for passive devices, uh, there are a lot of new material like resistor pass, uh, thick, uh, thick or th thin film plated resistor, annular ring resistor, and uh, uh, also other material like omega ply uh, base materials that can be used to get uh, uh, resistors directly on the inner layer. Uh, on inner layer, uh, normally. Also, as in the past, it's possible to design also capacitors and conductance inside of the PCB. Uh, these uh, special purpose systems can be found on many, many applications where uh, is necessary an uh, high density interconnection and it reduces assembly work time and assembly test time because the components, the components are previously inserted inside and tested. Uh, active devices uh, or components needs, uh, as you can uh, see in this picture, a cavity where uh, to be placed in and uh, after, where, uh, after the press uh, lamination cycle uh, uh, they, are, they will be totally covered by resin and inside of the multi-layer uh, build-up. In, uh, uh, in last uh, uh, pictures of this topic, you could see the difference between an SMT uh, PCB on the left uh, picture with surface mounts technology and an embedded one. The embedded system you you can see is uh, free of space available for other kind of uh, surface application. Obviously, there are a lot of uh, technology to uh, place the components inside that you can see uh, in the in the down part of this uh, of this slide, with the chip uh, facing up or chip down uh, after connecting all by micro drill or uh, blind vias. Uh, okay, we can go on another kind of uh, subject. This subject is named hybrid PCBs. Uh, in the recent years, some new hybrid technology 
with different purposes uh, are uh, are appearing into the world of the PCB. Um, you can see by the pictures that uh, part of the signal will uh, become a, an op uh, optical signal uh, that could be placed on the surface of the on the surface of the PCB, but recently also inside of the PCB. Uh, the, um, the materials that are used now are uh, polymeric uh, waveguides uh, inserted inside the PCB before the press phases. Um, why um, was uh, why this kind of choose? Uh, this kind of choose because uh, optical fiber that you can place on the surface of the of the PCB are very slight and fragile, so lamination lamination process could damage uh, the optical fiber uh, very hard. Uh, instead, polymeric waveguides are more resistant and uh, are easy to work because. Uh, uh, the, because the, the realization inside of the PCB, the production uh, uh, inside of the PCB, has uh, uh, the same chem chemical process, photo etching process, uh, as other kind of uh, uh, other kind of uh, tools inside of the PCB. So it is very easy to uh, manage. And polymeric uh, waveguides so are suitable for this kind of uh, photo etching process. Uh, with this kind of uh, PCB, uh, in this age where uh, the, the data rate is increasing day by day, uh, this kind of uh, architectures has uh, uh, some benefits. Uh, large bandwidth, uh, high speed inter interconnection, and uh, also less eating problem, as we said before, because uh, part of the signal is uh, an electrical standard signal, as you know, uh, on the copper uh, parts of the PCB. But the other part, uh, managed by optical signal, uh, by transmitter and receiver inside, uh, installed uh, on, the, on the bare boards, are without jowl effect, so you don't have eating problem on the on the communi on the high speed communication let's go on the uh, last uh, topic the substrate integrate waveguides effect was discovered in japan uh, in the late 90 and is an after is a, is another tool or resource for uh, uh, RF designer for radio frequency designer to uh, have a good interconnection architecture uh, using uh, use it normally also on millimeter wave frequencies millimeter wave frequencies are radio frequencies radio waves between the range 20 from 20 to 100 gigahertz so uh, are named extremely high frequency and the, uh, these um, these millimeter wave are used in a 5g application uh, in 5g up that normally are uh, using millimeter waves uh, uh, bandwidth in a typical 28 or 39 gigahertz the effect of uh, substrating integrated waveguide uh, following uh, following a specification of the form formula that you can uh, find everywhere now uh, could give you possibility on a particular kind of substrate uh, with particular uh, uh, with particular uh, pattern to be uh, to be produced on the substrate uh, allow you to uh, replace micro strip or strip line when they start to drop down at very very high frequency extremely high frequency uh, normally one of the material most used is rogers uh, all the family all the rogers family and with with this kind of uh, with this kind of architecture uh, engineer mm, can manage electromagnetic fields inside of the substrate of, uh, of a normal PCB. Uh, 
uh, producing or uh, designing uh, different kind of uh, uh, of radio frequency passive components uh, as uh, for example antennas uh, broadband uh, or uh, slotted antennas directional or multiport uh, couplers uh, uh, radio frequency amplifiers and radio frequency filters all kind of filters only changing the the drawing and changing the shape of the of the plated and drilled holes that you can see in the picture uh, <clears throat> all uh, radio frequency filter for example uh, you can create notch filter high pass uh, filter low low pass filter band pass filter and so on uh, another possibility is uh, the via stitching and shielding of part of the PCB that uh, has problem of interference or has problem of mm, big electromagnetic field created during the uh, current passage on the conductors. In last picture of, of my presentation you can see uh, on the top uh, a broadband antenna uh, a slotted uh, antenna on the right side uh, uh, directly inserted in a, um, in a PCB surface and uh, in the in the down uh, pictures you can see the stitching and the shielding of area of a PCB to avoid any kind of interference and to uh, limit electromagnetic uh, fields inside of the stitched or uh, of the stitcher or, or the shielded uh, drill uh, plated holes. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Potenza. It was a very interesting contribution. And I'm sure there will be many, many questions. And again, I invite you to ask the questions via the chat, the questions for Mr. Potenza. In the meantime, we can also see the survey. And again, I invite you to respond to the service. And we will comment on this and comment on the answers during the round table. So let's start with the questions and the Q&A session for Mr. Potenza. So um, this is the uh, survey that you can see. And again, let's uh, see, let's start with the questions for Mr. Potenza. Is it better to choose a rigid flex or totally flex solution in a PCB design? It depends on the needs of the customer or the designer. Uh, normally, if you need a continuous uh, flexi flexible uh, PCB and uh, uh, if there are not problems uh, connected to the durability and to the resistance of the, of the bare boards, uh, you can choose uh, the flex uh, architecture. Otherwise, uh, uh, in case of uh, a lot of vibration, uh, in case of um, uh, you, you wish to get uh, a longer durability of the PCB and also because a, a flex one has uh, a lot of uh, issues during uh, uh, a lot of issues during uh, uh, assembling the best choosing if is possible is on rigid flex PCB in terms of durability in terms of versatility in terms of uh, resistance to thermal shock or mechanical shock. Other question, which is, um, how is it possible to shield some PCBs areas only with drilled and plated holes? This could happen because uh, it uses uh, the, the uh, substrate the integrated waveguides effect. Uh, these are these uh, particular phenomena with a with a with a with a particular shape of the drilled uh, hole can shield uh, a part uh, limiting uh, the um, limiting the electromagnetic field in that area so it is possible to stitch uh, and to shield some part of the pcb with uh, this kind of hole that must be drilled as in uh, uh, theoretical uh, formulas of the substrate integrated waveguides uh, phenomena. Another question, maybe the last one, and it is what is the maximum speed rate and maximum loss of signals with uh, poly uh, polymeric waveguides? 
polymeric waveguides uh, you can get uh, you can get with uh, with an array of polymeric waveguides uh, inserted inside of the PCB you can get uh, um, um, flow rate uh, uh, communication rate about uh, from uh, from 10 gigabyte per second to 20 gigabyte per second but the losses are uh, higher than uh, you expect because uh, um, polymeric waveguides have no the same uh, characteristics uh, of uh, optical fiber and the losses uh, are calculated about about on 9 10 decibel per centimeter the only advantage is uh, the only advantage is that uh, in a board there are no many centimeters to connect to area to different area so the losses are um, acceptable Thank you, Mr. Potenza. It was really interesting. Thank you for your time and your contribution. And now we have the second speaker, Mr. Marco Moreale, the sales director of Eleprint. Welcome. Buonasera a tutti and welcome to LAPrint webinar and LMaster webinar. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, what happens when a new technology arrives on the market and uh, its effect on old technologies. Are new technologies taking place of old technologies or are they adding up to the old technologies market? In my opinion, we have some data that uh, will allow us to have some idea what uh, is going on. And this is the uh, first, uh, first uh, slide, is title of the, and the fil rouge of this uh, discussion about uh, uh, what happens when a new technology arrives uh, on the market. So the question is, is the new technology taking place of old technology or uh, adding up on top of old technologies on the market? Uh, to try to understand, uh, let's analyze, assess uh, what happened uh, and, uh, in a market very competitive as uh, that of uh, phones, mobile phones and smartphones, uh, when uh, a new technology, substrate like PCB, arrived on the market. Uh, this technology arrived on the market in 2017. And in, uh, in a few years, uh, reached uh, and passed the 10% mark, and last year uh, um, stabilizing on the 15% mark, and is forecast to reach and pass the 20-25% marks in the 2024. This increase of SLP technology had, had a, an impact on existing technologies on the market, so it seems that for smartphones and uh, mobile phones, uh, uh, it is true that uh, new technology kicks off uh, old technology, but uh, let's check what happens uh, on the world market and not just in one market. Uh, unlikely, we don't have uh, the what would be the most useful uh, um, uh, hint to understand what happens to the world market, because uh, data on how many PCB have been sold during the years in the world, the world are not easily to find, so that uh, we had to use a proxy. A proxy is uh, the value, total value of global PCBs, global PCB sales in the world. And here we can see this. Uh, pay attention is a logarithmic scale to have all the data in the same uh, uh, playground so that we can compare them. We see that uh, global PCB value um, sales have been growing for the past uh, 10, 20 years. I'll do, it seems that the pace of growth of uh, HDI, so the new technology or flex, is much higher than uh, the, the, the wall of the market. So it seems they have uh, they took uh, shares from uh, other technology, old technologies. The discontinuity in the lines is uh, the difference between uh, uh, real data for the uh, year 2020 and uh, the forecast, uh, and this difference uh, is slightly less smaller market is due to the COVID pandemic, of course. 
So what happens? Why I do think that uh, it's not true that uh, uh, new technologies have uh, taken away, uh, taken away uh, sales or value, uh, market value to all techno standard technology. This is because uh, a big um, evolution happened in the in, on the market, I mean in the manufacturing market. During the last 20 years, a huge uh, reallocation of uh, manufacturing has been uh, undergoing in the world world. As you can see, Americas, for instance, that uh, used to produce 10 million dollars PCB per year, arrived uh, decreased to just a little bit less than three. Europe from seven to from seven to two, and China, China instead boomed from three to almost 32 billion. So the same for Taiwan plus Korea. So there was a displacement and a reallocation of manufacturing that implied even a difference in the cost of PCB manufacturing. It means that one square meter of PCB manufactured in America used to cost much more than how much it costs now to manufacture it, manufacture it in China. So this, uh, what we saw before, should be adjusted for the difference in cost of the single PCB that has decreased a lot. So if we could uh, take in account this, we would see that the real uh, quantity or share of uh, the piece of this value of PCB has been increasing more than it seems from just the value and that standard technologies they are those where the price decrease is more sensible have increased more than what new technologies have taken away so uh, this gives gives in my opinion an idea of what is going to happen when the new uh, boy, the new kid on the block is going to arrive. Well, it's already arrived because I'm talking about uh, printed electronics, uh, a subject where that uh, my friend uh, George Lelerba will explain you extensively later. What we see here that is a technology that is going to is is already growing, is growing exponentially, and is forecast to grow at the same exponential rate or even more. Who knows? But what I can say is that uh, this technology is not going to take over uh, uh, market value out of uh, standard uh, or old uh, PCB manufacturing, manufacturing technologies, uh, but it's going to add uh, on top of it uh, and so increasing the, the, the whole market of PCB in, uh, in the world in the next uh, 10, 20 years. And then uh, who knows? But uh, Surely two layer PCB are here and are going to stay with us for a long, long, long time yet. So I thank you, you for uh, following my presentation and uh, I invite you to, pull, to ask uh, any question you would like to ask to have more um, explanation about my slides and presentation. Thank you, Mr. Morreale. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm sure there will be many questions from the, the audience. And again, I invite the audience to uh, ask the questions via the chat. In the meantime, we can also see the survey. And I invite you also to answer to the survey because I said uh, we will be commenting the survey and the answers during the round table. So now we have the Q&A sessions for Mr. Moreale. Let's start with the first question we have received. And it is this, according to you, when will production relocation towards Asian countries end? When will it end? Well, uh, it's not easy to answer this because uh, uh, everybody would, would like to have a crystal ball to predict the forecast this. But in my opinion, this uh, relocation is going to first change because China is getting uh, more expensive than it was. So Chinese is, are already reallocating the, their production, their manufacturing in different countries. For instance, India is one of the next big uh, things for the future. And maybe other countries will take a place or part of the place that has China now. So I, in my opinion, relocation is not going to end uh, shortly. It's going to change. But uh, in my opinion, it's going to slow down for what is when Americas or Europe are concerned. 
since a new politics attitude of America politics or and policy of America poli politics and European policy are changing. It means that uh, strategic production has uh, manuf PCB manufacturing will take have a more uh, um, will be more cared by our politics and uh, a, a European manufacturing will be uh, assist, will assist by low uh, restriction in uh, manufacturing a PCB abroad. That means that the allocation will go on, but uh, many of new PCB manufacturing high technology and uh, sensitive technology will stay in Europe, in Europe and will increase the European share in those markets. So the allocation is not ended, but will be different and will change. So we will see a very in evolving market and uh, a different market for reallocation. Okay, thank you. And another question that we have received is, uh, which is the maximum limit to the growth of global PCBs in the market? Well, uh, the sky is the limit, someone has told. Uh, it's difficult to say, in my opinion, will keep growing at the same rate as uh, has been growing in the past year since uh, in the 70s uh, when every uh, household had a, a washing machine and fridge and television set and maybe one car everybody said okay we are to the limit who knows who needs more television more cars or more fridge or whatever and everybody saw what happened and uh, what happened is uh, for pcb is that now almost 40 percent of cars value are electronics, so PCB and components, and more and more uh, circuits are present in uh, every aspect or object of our life. So who would expect that um, uh, clocks would be smart clocks with a lot of electronics? Now here, here we are. So in my opinion, the market value, total global market value for PCB is going to grow at the same rate as today. And we are here for uh, taking advantage of this grow uh, with our capabilities and our expertise. Thank you. Uh, one last question, because we don't have so much time, is what kind of technology will be more likely to be produced in Europe in the next few years? Well, of course, uh, sensitive sector, uh, military and uh, avionics. Uh, and health, uh, medical, and uh, in my opinion, high technology, where the difference in the cost is less important than having a tight cooperation between uh, uh, PCB, electronics manufacturer, and uh, final customer. And in this will uh, justify stay the, the key, the staying and existence of uh, in, uh, PCB manufacturing in Europe because of this uh, um, and being near, be, being close, being uh, support of uh, final, final customers. So in my opinion, those are the class or categories of PCB that are going to stay. So the sensitive sectors and high technology sectors. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Moreale. We don't have time for other questions. We'll talk again during the round table. And now, welcome to Giovanni Cogliati, the Vice President. Thank you, Anna, for the introduction and welcome everybody and good afternoon. First of all, a big thank to Mr. Morreale and Mr. Potenza for the very clear and interesting presentation about printed circuit board technologies. I think we are now ready for a further step ahead in the future of electronics. I'm referring to printed electronics, a niche of technology that allows the printing of circuits and electronic components through conductive inks on different uh, substrates like uh, plastic, paper, or even directly on human skins. Uh, in Italy, there are very few companies managing uh, printed electronics. The most advanced one today is FlipTech, a spin-off of the Italian Institute of Technology 
actively cooperating with Elemaster. We have uh, here uh, Mr. Giorgio Dall'Erba, uh, who is the CEO of FlipTech, uh, that will drive us through this innovation. I met uh, Mr. Dell'Erba a few years back, and I was very impressed by his technology uh, knowledge and his sincere passion. I hope you will enjoy his speech, and thanks to everybody. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you to Giovanni for introducing me, and thanks to Elemaster for having, um, having me here uh, to explain you uh, the marvels of printed electronics. Um, I am CEO of uh, Flip Technologies. Uh, we are uh, a startup, pretty young actually. We are a couple of years uh, old. Uh, active in the field of printed and flexible electronics. We are a spin-off company of the Italian Institute of Technology that is a research center based in Italy. It's actually a network of research centers based in Italy. Uh, our team mostly focuses on what is needed for developing printed electronics that is actually a multi-sectorial um, um, approach to electronics. Uh, in fact, uh, we are not only electronics engineers, but also device physics engineers and uh, smart material scientists. So, um, why are we talking about printed electronics actually? So, uh, the thing is that the word uh, around us is changing a lot. Changing a lot means that the electronics, uh, uh, as you may very, very be uh, well aware, uh, has very different requirements now. Uh, the Internet of Things is taking over and uh, every object has to be connected. Actually, ultra-connected environments are now a thing. Everything has to be connected with everything. But there is also very clear focus on uh, human-centric interaction and uh, object-to-human interaction. And this is leading to a very specific branch of applications that are, for example, the continuous monitoring for patients and uh, point of care devices, for example. And uh, this IoT um, phenomenon is actually, uh, as I said, taking over, but this means having billions and billions of uh, devices around the world. And uh, one of the key problems that uh, um, few people are actually focusing is that this specific number of devices will have to be disposed some way. And this means having a large amount of e-waste. E-waste uh, is something extremely bad for the environment, uh, everybody knows that, but the amount of e-waste is increasingly ri rising. And this means that we are now today almost between seven and 10 kilograms per, e per person globally of e-waste. Uh, this is not sustainable together with uh, the complexity of Internet of Things or having connected uh, integrated devices that interact with the human body, this means we need to change the paradigm of technology. We need a new electronics that helps us in fulfilling flexible devices that are conformable, that can be uh, uh, on large surfaces and also, of course, have a, a limited environmental impact. Please uh, be aware that actually I'm not saying we need to change the electronics. In terms of performance, current technology is, uh, is extremely good and is it will be only increasing from this side but we need an alternative technology that can complement the current technology when actually it's needed and when standard technology cannot go and this is for example uh, what happens with the uh, specific printed electronics. There is a, a technology for additive manufacturing and selective deposition of smart materials through printing techniques. And it's a technology that is actually very cost effective because of the additive manufacturing and extremely energy efficient because most of the materials don't require processing temperature that overcome the 100 degrees Celsius. But, um, of course, much more interesting is the large scalability of this technology. Because with printing techniques, we can actually print very large volumes of devices in very small amount of time, changing the paradigm from 
uh, the number of pieces I can produce per day on how many kilometers of electronics can I produce today. So uh, just to get into the, the water, actually, what is specifically printed electronics? As I was referring before, printed electronics is uh, an umbrella term that uh, has under his name actually many different kind uh, of application, but uh, as a common, de common denominator, uh, the use of printing techniques and smart functional materials. Smart functional materials might be uh, conductive inks, but of course, and for the vast majority, actually are modified polymers and plastics that can have very different uses. This, these smart materials are generally taken, dissolved into solvents, and after that used to, uh, to print them inside uh, standard printing equipment. Uh, the device is uh, finally engineered and printed to have the desirable feature. But uh, as I was saying before, this is not a substitutional technology, it's much more of a complementary technology. In fact, as I was referring before, the, the in terms of performance, actually, this technology cannot reach standard single-coin electronics. But, for example, can be printed of flexible substrates, have very um, variable form factors, easy to define and easy to manufacture. And for this reason, uh, this is a very good complement for uh, the standard electronics. Between the benefits that we have, I was referring to smart materials, and uh, together with smart materials comes what is called solution-based processing that is one of the key of printed electronics. Solution-based processing means that actually the material that you use is in liquid form or in the paste form uh, so that it can easily be printed in any kind of printing uh, equipment that you can imagine. So from inkjet printing to aerosol jet printing uh, to screen printing, uh, gravier flexography. But the, the, um, the, uh, the interesting aspect is that actually the portfolio of material available is almost infinite and very easy to modify. So we can have polymer materials that, for example, are conductors, but also silver nanoparticle, copper nanoparticles as conductors, as well as polymers that are semiconductor. And so uh, actually semiconductor like silicon, um, this means that we are able to realize uh, intelligent device like transistors and diodes and of course as we are very well aware uh, plastic materials polymer materials are generally insulators and there is a huge variety of insulators from this aspect uh, together with a, a huge set of materials comes the huge set of uh, substrates on which we can actually fabricate this kind of electronics and not only we integrate uh, with standard polymide paper as a, a polymide substrate uh, like for example in a flexible PCB but we can also enable the use of PET, PN that are extremely easy to fabricate, cheap and uh, overall recyclable, paper and of course, more um, novel materials like inspired materials and elastomers uh, for mechanical flexibility and even stretchability. In some cases, substrates can be so thin uh, in the order of the micron thin that can electronics can actually be wrapped in your hand and then um, reused with, with, uh, with ease. Of course, uh, this is only possible because of the low operating temperatures and low manufacturing temperature of uh, smart materials. As I was saying, the scalability uh, is, of course, a matter of concern for this kind of technology. And there are actually two approaches to uh, manufacture of printed electronics. Um, the one that is most foreseen is what is called roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing, in which actually an entire web uh, and roll of plastic or paper gets inside the machine uh, is processed with the additive deposition of multiple layers of materials in order to have a final roll of electronic devices. This is, of course, in contrast with uh, the standard sheet-to-sheet -sheet approach, but depending on the volume, both kind of uh, approaches might be usable. And um, of course, one very important thing to, 
uh, to understand is actually that um, the final benefit of this technology is that the new design uh, paradigm that enables. This means that there are no more limits on the, on the form factor. Um, we can definitely integrate electronics on ultra thin substrate and this means being able to create something like smart patches or smart tattoos on the human skin directly. Uh, the easy manufacturing of course is extremely important and uh, we are definitely changing the paradigm of design of products in this way. This means that uh, up to now, what we usually do is that we design a product, an electronic product, around the electronic, the electronics board, the electronic FPC. In this way, actually, we can design the product and then adapt the electronic easily, directly onto the product after the product design as a last step. And this is of incredible interest for many applications, for example, in the design, domotics, et cetera. But um, just to go a bit in deep, uh, printed electronics, as I was saying, is a, an umbrella term, and many devices today are already available or uh, under study. There are very few companies who are actually working on uh, a whole system approach. FlipTech is one of them. Um, around the world, actually, you can probably have, uh, have already seen something like printed batteries and printed solar cells, energy harvesters like thermoelectric generators, uh, but also actuators like flexible display. Uh, there are a huge variety available, flexible and printed speakers as well. Um, flexible and printed sensors so from temperature to gas there are many sensors that are available in the market and going towards uh, vital sign uh, um, uh, vital sign um, uh, vital sign uh, uh, i don't know <laughs> sorry so uh, actually we can integrate very different uh, devices like for example electrochemical sensor for biosensing um, but there are generally a couple of approaches to uh, printed and flexible electronics. So um, the first one is uh, called flexible and hybrid electronics. So it's very close to what is known to you probably as FPC, uh, only that the FPC actually is using polymide substrate. In this case, uh, um, we are trying to avoid polymide substrates as well as um, uh, standard copper tracks. Instead, we want to focus on the realization of smart system that can integrate both uh, printed conductors like for example silver or printed uh, printed silver or printed copper nanoparticles as well as standard ICs that are then attached or soldered onto the system. This yields to uh, let's say a lower cost of the final device because the final substrate is cheaper uh, but of course it's still tied to uh, the use of standard microchips and the attach of these microchips to flexible substrate is sometimes tricky and creates some trouble specifically in the reliability onto the flexibility. Um, from this side, actually, there is another approach and is one that Fleet Technologies is currently pursuing and is called fully printed electronics, in which all the components, starting from the battery to the conductive trucks to the transistors itself, are printed onto the same substrate. And this means taking maximum advantage of all the advantages of the printed electronics, as I referred before. So just to get uh, inside of what specifically Flip Technology is doing, we are developing mostly our technology onto printed and flexible microchips. This means that we have realized our own integrated circuit stack that is based on organic thin film transistors. And these transistors are actually printed on ultra thin substrates down to one micron thickness, uh, having them, of course, to be uh, extremely flexible. But together with flexibility, we are doing uh, and employing also um, a full polymeric or full organic approach. This means that we are trying to limit to the minimum the amount of metal inside, for example. And this opens the, the door to recyclability of the electronics. That is something that is extremely important for fields like smart packaging and, biomed and disposable biomedical devices. So uh, our focus in this way, in this sense, is actually what I was telling you before. So we are trying to remove any kind of assembly step inside 
this uh, this manufacturing, and this means, of course, trying to reduce uh, uh, the amount of uh, um, of work done. So. Um, what we are building actually is a platform that is based on our organic film filter transistors and can integrate many other components like energy supplies, actuators, and sensors to have integrated systems. So we are creating what is called standalone systems that are uh, systems that, that are totally self-sufficient and can interact by themselves uh, with, the, with, the, um, with the, the final customer. So we don't do only transistors, we do also other kind of devices, and in this case, for example, fully printed diodes for energy harvesting, OLEDs and printed batteries. And uh, we have a specific use case that we uh, want to show you. This is a specific dose counting smart label for metered dose inhalers, uh, with which actually uh, the, the final user can track the number of doses used in a metered dose inhaler. And this was actually before a, pro, a, a concept and that's become afterwards a prototype. And it was the winner out of the Organic Electronics Association competition 2021. Just to give you a brief idea of uh, how it works, we have integrated a printed flexible battery together with a printed touch sensor or the electronics that is needed in order to control the device that is as well flexible and an electrophoretic display, very low power to uh, signal the end user what is happening. So, um, one interesting thing is that this uh, device is extremely thin, it's below 300 microns, so it can be actually rolled onto the final meter dose inhaler. And uh, after this, um, you can actually add a simple overlay graphic, and uh, the final user interaction with the product doesn't change, uh, it just has uh, one more uh, information to show. So we are not only into uh, printed electronics, we also do some hybrid components. And this uh, uh, is a demonstration, for example, of a, a temperature label uh, that is NFC activated. Uh, our process in general with the customer starts with a process definition and ends to our prototyping and then uh, a scale up design. Uh, but of course, not all the companies know what printed electronics is, and if you don't know specifically want to know more, we have a specific workshop that can be actually tailored to your company and to your needs to understand how to apply printed electronics. Uh, in general, we are very open to collaboration and we in generally envision to work uh, with new customers who want to understand this word uh, of printed electronics. Thank you very much. We now have the usual Q&A session for your speech and for you. And we also have the survey. Again, I invite you to answer to the survey. And now um, we have uh, the questions. Let's uh, read the questions that we have received for you. Now, the first one is, in the future, which will be the break-even price for this technology? Is it going to be similar to the one of current Flex PCBs? Yes, so thank you for the question. So. Actually, it depends a lot on the, kind of the specific application and uh, what the manufacturing uh, uh, involves. In general, is uh, believed to be much lower than standard uh, flexible PCBs. Uh, for example, ju just, to, just to give an example, the, the actual dose counter that I showed before, the entire system uh, should be less than 50 cents. Okay, thank you. Then we have other questions. Let's see. Um... Another question is, how is mass production ready for this technology? Uh, also in this case, it depends on the, on the kind of specific application that we were talking about. Uh, hybrid electronics is much more advanced in the industrial manufacturing possibilities. Uh, but of course, as I was saying, doesn't distribute all the benefits of printed electronics and the cost reduction, even if it's there, uh, might be limited. Uh, to only some specific application. Uh, the fully printed electronics, instead, it's uh, at, a, at an earlier stage, uh, and uh, we probably have to wait a couple of years at least to go into industrial manufacturing. Okay, thank you. And there is another question. I am afraid it's going to be the last questions because we have run out of time. And it's about the long-term reliability of the product. Uh, so what about the long-term reliability of the product made, made using printed electronics? So for the first test that actually we have run um, uh, in our specific case, actually um, uh, for the dose counter, the, um, 
the the shelf life that is asked is uh, for for example two years with one year operational life, and uh, all these kind of requirements are met in our case. Um, there are certain kind of devices like for example OLED for which it's much more complex to address the final reliability. Um, as I was saying, smart materials field is very new and uh, specific tests are needed for some uh, materials still. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Giorgio Dell'Erba. And also thank you very much to Mr. Paolo Potenza and uh, Mr. Moreale. It is now the end of the first part. We're going to meet again in about three minutes for the round table. Thank you. again we are back here for the round table so we are going to comment on the results of the service that you kindly uh, answered to see what your preferences are let's see let's start from the speech uh, by mr paolo potenza so the question was on which technology would you rather invest and here we have results so uh, black metal and metal coin zero percent and uh, embedded, 33%, HDI, 11%, hybrid, 22%, rigid flex and flex, uh, again, 22%, and SIY effect, 11%. So I'd say that the most preferred one is embedded. So what is your comment on this result? Did you expect this result? What did you think before? Uh, no, I, I didn't expect this kind of result, uh, sincerely, uh, because uh, it's one of the most difficult and uh, most um, complex technology that we have spoken before. Uh, but I understand that the great part of our customer, the great part of the uh, follower of these of these uh, webinar are interested in this kind of technology because uh, the embedded uh, systems uh, has the advantages that I said before to reduce the to reduce the um, the, the failure in uh, in assembling 
to reduce the the, the working uh, the working time in assembly and also the test phases uh, after assembly in PCB. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that uh, to have a system with um, with uh, more durability, reliability on the market, uh, probably. Uh, this is the the goal of uh, our customer uh, together with us uh, to get uh, the, the best results uh, in terms of uh, assembled uh, assembly uh, PCB. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest is strange. That uh, is very strange. Uh, the result uh, on uh, zero percent about uh, back metal or uh, or <clears throat> or um, back metal or uh, copper coin metal uh, technology because the heating issues uh, now and i think also for the next uh, future will be will will become a, a big issues uh, in terms of uh, uh, communication communication uh, bandwidth communication rate and uh, the, the 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 data uh, interchange uh, between uh, company and uh, so on it's uh, becoming very 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 big so the heating problem probably merit a little bit of uh, interesting uh, more, but it's normal that uh, thirty-three percent on embedded system. The great part of the people that is following uh, the customer that are following uh, this webinar probably need uh, assembly PCB, and so uh, for this reason probably the choice uh, uh, was on embedded system. Yes, that's true. There is also a rather pretty good um, preference for hybrid and rigid flex and, and flex. That's 22% for both. So I, I yes, believe because that our is... technology uh, in, uh, involved in, uh, in uh, big steps of uh, innovation and mm -hmm. uh, are very interesting uh, for the their ability to uh, reduce the space on the PCB and uh, near the PCB to be mm -hmm to have a, a good uh, a good result and a, a, a system in, integrated system that allow you to make a lot of things that in the past were only a dream mm -hmm. and what about the two other speakers do they have anything to say about this uh, share of results in the survey mm, well, me too i'm surprised by the zero won by compare coin technologies uh, at back metal technologies uh, me too. I think that uh, thermal uh, thermal dissipation is an important subject, but of course, it depends on uh, what uh, uh, sub, -sub sub subset of customers we are following, following us, and uh, probably this is an explanation. Because me too, I think that uh, heat dissipation is an important subject. Mm -hmm. Will be or would be an important subject in in the future or in nowadays uh, PCB. Okay, that's clear, I think. And uh, now maybe we can see the survey about uh, what Mr. Marco Moreale said and the survey about him. And the question was, uh, which price difference between Chinese manufacturing and European manufacturing would convince companies to reshore PCB manufacturing from East to uh, Europe? And let's see the results that I have here. So one choice was um, high tech and uh, 20 to 30, 50%, 50 percent, that's the percentage of the answers. Uh, and then um, it was um, 10, 20, 13 percent. Then it was 0, 10, 25 percent. And um, so these are the answers. So, oh, and none, none was 13 percent as the answer. So I would say that most of the preferences were on the first one. 20 and, and, and 30. So what is your comment on this? Uh, well, um, I expect the similar results because, uh, uh, well, and going around and talking with customers uh, g gave me this uh, um, feeling. Mm -hmm. well, but, well, of course, having data numbers is, is a different. So I'm happy that data are confirming what my feelings were uh, but I, anyway i'm surprised because i didn't expect uh, to have those this uh, kind of data so those are data i would study further to 
define a, a, a strategy, our strategy for the future in both in terms of uh, offers to our customer and uh, uh, invest in strategy investments uh, to for our our plans because this gives, in my opinion, more stress on the importance of uh, having an in, in interesting offers for uh, from um, our uh, European manufacturing sites for customers. Okay, that was for high tech, and then we have the answers for standard multi layers. There was uh, twenty two thirty zero percent and 10, 20, 38%, 0, 10%, 50%, and none, 12%. So I'd say that the preferences went from 0 to, to 10. Yes. What is your uh, in, comment on this? In this, I see that uh, uh, customers, of course, uh, feel uh, st standard technology, multi-layer technology, as uh, taken for granted. So something is kind of... Uh, they were PCB are kind of commodity. So where they are manufactured is not important uh, and price is king. So price starts getting more important than where are manufactured and kind of connection they have with manufacturer. So I read in this way. Okay. And this was standard uh, multi-layers. And now we have two layers and the choices were between 20, 30, and that got 25%, then 10, 20, 25% again, 0, 10, 25% again, and none, 25% again. So the same results for all four of them. Yeah, it seems that uh, uh, more than multi-layer for two layers PCB, they are uh, considered, considered uh, uh, as uh, uh, commodities, so the price... Uh, drives the choices of our customer so the cheaper the better okay this is clear i i think okay maybe somebody else in the panel has something to say about this about this result okay so maybe we can now go to mr dell'erba and there were two questions in the survey let's see the first one is how much willing would you be to introduce a new disruptive technology not yet uh, proven by time passage in your lineup? And there were three choices, I'd say really willing, moderately willing and unwilling. So really willing got 14%. And then um, moderately willing got 71%, which I think is the highest preference, and unwilling, 14%. The, those were the answers by the audience. What is your comment on this? So yes, that definitely this is a, the specific trend that we are seeing in the company. So um, the thing is that um, printed electronics is not yet a, validate, a fully validated technology. And this means definitely that it still requires some time and some customers, depending on the industry they are in, are more propense to risk or not. For example, in the automotive industry, we have seen that um, the willing to take risk on new materials that are not yet 100% proven is extremely complex. But for example, in biomedical devices and the smart packaging, there is much more willingness to risk and a much more, uh, they are less risk adverse. Okay, I see. And then the second one was, would you be available, would you be willing to test flip technology for some of your R&D products? And again, it was really willing, moderately willing and unwilling. Really willing got 29% of preferences, moderately willing 43% and unwilling 29%. So what is your opinion on this distribution of answers? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's more or less what we see every day. So there is somebody who doesn't want to take risk, uh, but uh, for the others, I will say to contact us so we can have a chat definitely onto this specific topic. And we are more than happy to cooperate, uh, try to understand what are your needs and uh, specifically go and probably feasibility studies uh, and uh, proof of concepts pilots and uh, mm -hmm. whatever on this side. Okay, so this is... Uh... Uh, your contribution to this. And I think it was a very interesting 
way to survey and to see what uh, the audience or potential customers really want and what they're willing to do and what they are interested in. So this was really a good way for everyone to know, also for the rest of the audience, I'd say. So I would really like to thank the audience for participating in this very interesting event. And I would like to thank all of the speakers and for your participation and uh, your contribution, which was very uh, interesting. And so now I would like to say goodbye to everyone and see you again at the next webinar by LA Master and LA Print. Goodbye.